Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide channel. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today is a topic which I've been looking forward to talking about for quite some time. And I'm looking forward to it so much, I've made the effort to dress up for the occasion. And you probably already know, you've seen the thumbnail, and now you've guessed by the way I'm dressed, I'm going to talk about a fictional character who often occupies quite a bit of real estate in any conversation where men begin to talk about being sartorially smart and stylish in life. And of course, I'm going to talk about James Bond because for well over 60 years now, James Bond has been the epitome of the masculine man. Uh, you know, he is the sophisticated character who we look at on the silver screen and gets the job done. However, it's not all about the silver screen. For me, there are two James Bonds. There is the James Bond, the pure James Bond in the novels, the literary Bond created by Ian Fleming all those years ago. And then there's been that morphing into this iconic movie character, which continues to ram rumble onto the modern day as we all wait to hear who will be the next actor to fulfill the role because whichever actor gets the role of Bond you know they are propelled to a level of stardom which I think is unique in the cinematic world today you know wherever you are in the world whatever culture you're from people are conscious of James Bond and the actor who plays the character of Bond is forever you know uh, branded with that historic figure in their back catalogue of movie parts and when we look at the actors who have played Bond, Sir Sean Connery, Sir Roger Moore, uh, Piers Brosnan, uh, you know George Lazenby and most recently of course Daniel Craig and, and the others as well. So we are all super familiar with them and they're, it's almost like stardust has been sprinkled upon them. But there's a lot more to the 007 character than is portrayed in the movies but there are certain aspects to the character in the books, on the screen, which make us defer to that character as being this super cool individual who just seems to be a role model for debonair men and as they would like to be, perhaps this fictional version of a person. He was a role model in my earlier years, that's for sure. You know, my first conscious memory of going to the cinema was my father taking me to the Rex Cinema in the small South Wales town of Aberdeer. And I remember in the, it would have been the mid 1970s, watching a double bill of The Man with the Golden Gun and Live and Let Die. So Roger Moore was very much the Bond that I grew up with and you know, he occupied my childhood. And from that point on, like many of us, I have been ensnared by the story and the character of James Bond. So in answering the question which I've posed today, why is James Bond so cool? I have come up with seven character traits which I've distilled down, which perhaps we can learn from as well by you know, intentionally well-dressed men, men on a journey to chap nirvana, which is not just about looking sharp, it's about acting sharp as well. Bond seems to have you know, hit that level of nirvana perfection. So I've got seven areas in which I think we can learn from the character and perhaps bring a bit of that into the lives that we lead. Now, one of the most defining characteristics of James Bond, particularly in the movies, less so in the literary world, but in the movies, Bond just exudes this unshakable self-confidence in the way that he approaches his missions, the way that he approaches women, and just the way he leads his life in general. And, you know, it's, it's just something which is inherent within the character himself. He has this utter confidence in everything that he does. Undoubtedly, it's built up from the backstory of Bond, you know, the tough life that he has led. When you read the books, when you watch the bits of his, uh, his sort of uh, front-loaded character which comes out in the movies. It's because he's, he's had quite a tough life. His life has not been in any way easy. He has an incredibly difficult job and this has led to the character being utterly confident in everything he does. It's almost 
an obscene level of self-confidence, but it gives him the, necess the necessary boost that he, that he needs to successfully pull off the outcomes that is required from his missions. And I think for us people looking at that character, there's something to be learned from that. There's a lot to be said about having confidence in the way that you approach the obstacles of life. Now, as Bond, you know, obviously he's fictional, but he's based on real human beings. And, you know, his character has this super confidence. If we approach aspects of our life with a strong level of confidence in our ability to be successful, taking directly from the way that Bond does it in life, we will often, some of that success, some of that confidence will rub off on us. Even if we don't feel super confident that we can achieve what's desired, having a sense of confidence about the way that you tackle challenges in your life will undoubtedly stand you in better stead than if you go through life listening to an inner dialogue in your brain which says, you can't do this, you're not good enough for this. I sense that James Bond's inner dialogue just says, get it done, do it, you can do this. And perhaps we can learn to change the habits of our inner dialogue to say, yes, you can, instead of, no, you can't. So for me, that's one of the takeaways from the Bond character is confidence and having self-assurance in the way that we stride through life and we approach the challenges which face us. Believe you can do it, get your inner dialogue to say, yes, you can, instead of no, you can't. And the chances are, you probably will achieve those goals that you have set yourself. Now, another area in which James Bond seems to excel as he approaches his missions, whatever they may be, is he is an excellent problem solver. He thinks about the missions that he's undertaking and he strategizes a plan to get the job done. Now, a lot of us can learn from that because we tend to shamble through life waiting to see what will happen and reacting to the instances which present themselves to us. Well, Bond has never been like that. We know he's, he seems to be good at everything, doesn't he? His problem-solving skills comes from his confidence, yes, but it comes from this omnicompetence about everything he seems to do. He's a good skier. He is, you know, a good uh, at hand-to-hand -hand combat with people. He's an expert marksman. He can drive a car like the finest racing driver. He can jump into a helicopter or an aeroplane and seems instinctively to know how to operate it in all of these situations. And not just operate it, but operate it to an expert level, which allows him to be successful. But perhaps those of us looking at this omnicompetent problem solver can learn something about the way he approaches his missions. And we can take on some of that strategizing about perhaps some of the goals which we may have in our future lives. Maybe you're seeking a promotion in work. Maybe you're seeking to find a new partner, uh, somebody to share your life with. Or maybe you have a hobby and you intend to, I don't know, climb K2 or Mount Everest or run the Sahara Marathon. Whatever the problem is which faces you, strategizing for it in the way that Bond does, taking a strategic approach, dealing with it piece by piece, knocking off the various aspects of the problem until you achieve total success using the competence, maybe not omnicompetence, but the competence that we have built up along the way in the skills which are required and having a bit of that confidence which we talked about in point one will get us home and get us to achieving the goals which we set ourselves. Bond's ability to think on his feet and come up with solutions to complex problems is actually a well thought out process, particularly when we read about the Bond in the literary world. It's not just a walk into a situation and deal with it as it unfolds. Think about the things which you could call in your life problems. They may be goals, but it's a problem you need to achieve. And think about how you're going to overcome it. Plan for it, strategize for it and use your skills to do so. Now, another of Bond's attributes, which I think we can take on a little more of in our lives, is perhaps his fearlessness and his resilience in the face 
of overwhelming danger. He seems to go into situations where he knows there is going to be mortal risk, but he does so not with a devil-may-care attitude, not a stupid lack of attention to the danger, but with a very carefully calculated approach, which many of us could take inspiration from as we lead our own lives. He seems to enter high-risk things like car chases, defusing nuclear bombs, getting into hand-to-hand -hand combat with giant opponents who should beat him no problem at all. But he enters these situations with a resilience, a strength of character, having confidence in his own abilities. He's got an unwavering commitment to completing his mission, no matter what the cost, no matter what the potential outcome. And he just gets on and does the job. And perhaps many of us, when looking at the Bond character and thinking how could we enter that sort of trait into our own lives, perhaps we just have to be a little more fearless when we face the challenges, big or small, in our own lives. Maybe you're looking at an internal advertisement for a promotion or a new job in your workplace and you think to yourself, nah, it's not worth me applying. They've probably got somebody else in mind. Or if I apply for the job and I fail, how am I going to face the embarrassment with my colleagues who know that I've tried for something else and I've been unsuccessful? Well, what do you think James Bond would do? Would he just sit back and watch his co-workers take the matters into their own hands and seek those promotions? Or would he go for it, regardless of the outcome and the circumstances? Fearlessness and resilience is actually what gets you forward in life, not sitting back and watching other people take the risks. It is about taking the risks yourselves. Now, when it comes to Bond, another attribute, which I throw in with fearlessness and r resilience, that I really, really love about the character, and this is just a personal view of it, is he does it not for personal gain, not for wealth, not for recognition, but he does it through a sense of service. Now, in Bond's case, he's, uh, he's a civil servant, right? He, he's a military person. He serves his country. His, his allegiance is to his nation. And I think anybody who, you know, has ever served in the military or any, uh, you know, or sworn an oath as a scout or, you know, whatever it may be, to your country, to your flag, you get on board with that sense of patriotism. But for Bond, you know, he's a man who has these immeasurable skills. He could obviously use those skills for good when it comes to making money, but no, he does the opposite. He uses his skills for the betterment of others. How many times have we seen him save the world, both in the books and on the big screen? He could be using those skills for so many other things which could be beneficial to him, but he does it for us. He does it for his country, for queen and country, or king and country as it would be now for the next James Bond. But that is one of the attributes why I like. He uses his fearlessness and his resilience, not for gain, but for the benefit of others. Now, one area of Bond's character which I absolutely could not miss out here, and that's because generally I, I am a men's lifestyle channel and I often talk about the power of dressing well, but that his is sophistication and his impeccable style when we see him undertaking his missions. You know, he is synonymous with style and, you know, his impeccable taste has been seen throughout the movies time and time again, whether it's his tailoring, you know, over the years, we've seen Bond dressing in the finest clothes. Initially, Savile Row style. Now, you know, as, as the movie franchise has taken the place of the literary Bond in most of our consciousness, and I would, I have to tell you, entirely recommend that you read the books. If you like James Bond, don't just be seduced by the movies. There is an entirely different James Bond to be learned about if you read him in the written form. But, you know, when we see Bond, uh, you know, he dresses in this uber stylish way. Now he's wearing clothes by Tom Ford in the current movies, but in the past it was somewhat more traditional. And, you know, many men looked up to the character of Bond as being somebody who could be masculine, who could be very uh, brutish. You know, let, let's not for one moment deviate from the reality of what James Bond is. He is a murderer. He is a government-sanctioned killer who does the necessary dirty work 
for his country. All right? He gets the job done. He kills people. He is a very unpleasant individual. But he is like a, a, a steel fist in a velvet glove. We see him, his outer trappings are that of a stylish, elegant man who has the ability to stride between the different stratospheres of the hierarchy of society. You know, he's a monster. Yes, he is, no doubt about that. He, can, he kills people with his bare hands. But at the same time, what I like about him is that he can stride into a gentleman's club in St. James's in London, play a rubber of bridge with an opponent, enjoy fine dining, know all about the different champagnes, different burgundies and wines to drink with the right sort of foods. He'll order caviar and know its origins, where it comes from. And yet, not too far below the surface, there's this brooding killer. So it's quite a juxtaposition as portrayed by this individual. But it's the way that he navigates these two worlds, the sophistication in the way that he does so, is what we find very exciting. He embraces a refined lifestyle, but at the same time, he's got this jagged edge to his personality, where he's able to switch it on where necessary. That's what I really like about Bond. And I think from our point of view, as men looking at the character, looking at what we can take from that character, it is perhaps, yes, it's possible to have two sides to your life. You can be the guy whose job it is digging ditches on the road, you know, to keep the roadworks running. You can be the person who gets filthy in the nature of your job. Maybe you're a car mechanic and you're covered in oil all day. But when you come home, have a shower, you can put on fine clothes and go out in the evening. De gone are the days of a strict hierarchical class structure, even in England, all right? It's, it's not like that anymore. We don't have to be fearful of going into social environments just because our jobs are manual. I've only ever had working class jobs, but I'm not afraid to put on a collar and tie and stride into one of the finest hotels in London and order a drink at the bar. I know people I've been with in the past who have felt, felt really reluctant to do so because they think this is not my place. I don't, I shouldn't be in a place like this. I don't feel comfortable here. The truth is my money is the same color as anybody else's and the hotel will take my money just as, just as the Duke of wherever. If he wants a drink, I can have a drink in the same place. So take Bond's example. You can be one thing in one part of your life and another thing entirely in another part of your life. You can be sophisticated and you can be the man who works with your hands. Never think that the two cannot meet together in your personality. Now, I think another area of his character, which we can take from Bond and have some sort of solace in it in our own lives, is that Bond, despite his many strengths, is a deeply flawed character deeply flawed indeed. He's a complex individual. We don't get the real taste of it when we see him in the movies today. What we see is this sort of perfect man, who, as I said earlier, can fly an aeroplane, can play any card game to world-class level. He can seduce women without even trying. He seems to have the ability to throw on clothes and they just look magnificent on his body. He's got a great physique, but never seems to take exercise. Have you noticed these things? He's the perfect individual, but actually he isn't at all. He's a flawed man. The work that he does is terribly draining and awful. And anybody would find it difficult to countenance what you do in the day with the rest of the life that you have to live. And when I see Bond, I know from reading about him that the flaws which he has are human, very natural. I mean, even some of the books here, I'm not, let me, I'm sure it's Thunderball, is it? The one which, uh, this is one of, interestingly, Thunderball is one of, um, one of the better Bond books. But here we go. I will just read the very opening paragraph. It gives you an idea of how Bond gets through his life. It was one of those days when it seemed to James Bond that all life, as somebody had put it, was nothing but a heap of six to four against. To begin with, he was ashamed of himself a rare state of mind. He had a hangover, a bad one, with an aching head and stiff joints. When he coughed, smoking too much goes with drinking too much and doubles the hangover. A cloud of small luminous black spots swam across his vision like amoeba in a pond. 
the one drink too many sounded itself unmistakably. His final whiskey and soda had been no different from the 10 preceding ones. Tells us a bit about the Bond character there. In order to get through his day, he indulges deeply in the sins of the flesh. He drinks too much. He's questionably a functioning alcoholic in most of the books and latterly in the, the Daniel Craig era of the screen bond some of that started to come through too. In the books we see him using narcotics as was often the case. Uh, many um, sort of soldiers used amphetamines to get through missions during the Second World War. The amphetamines were issued to allow soldiers to get the bunch the punch of energy, power and motivation that they needed to achieve missions. You know, Bond has used that several times in the books to push through a mission, to get to the end of his, you know, outcomes. And what we see is a flawed individual with a troubled past, an orphan at an early age, struggling always to overcome the background that he had. Very flawed, very vulnerable in many ways. Started to come out in some of the movies isolated and lonely because he can't share his life with anyone. He knows there's no retirement from the work he's in. There's only one form of retirement and that's death. Uh, and that comes across as well. You know, there's a man living under the death sentence of the path that he has chosen in life. Now, what can we draw from that as individuals? Well, if I was looking to draw something from that flawed hero characteristic that Bond has, it would be that despite what backgrounds we've got, despite what kinks and pitfalls there have been in our individual paths through life, they can be overcome, they can be, you know, they can be defeated. Whatever issues you've had in the past, you might have had your issues with drink, you might have had your issues with failed relationships, you might have lost jobs and had your confidence knocked back. Maybe you can see yourself as the flawed hero, like Bond is. He just gets up, dusts himself off, keeps going forward. Perhaps we can all take something, you know, that regardless of what our shortcomings were, we can excel in the future. Around the next corner is the mission that will lead us to trap Nirvana. And as Bond keeps going relentlessly into the future until the mission is achieved, we can do the same too. Now, one of the characteristics I love about Bond is his seemingly endless appetite for adventure because many of his, his uh, globe-trotting adventures take him to exotic locations. They expose him to new cultures, new cities. I mean, he seems to be pretty good at absorbing them all, although he never has been able to speak another language, I've noticed, but, you know, he, he is not afraid to enter into new situations. And as I think many of us men, looking at Bond's globe-trotting adventures, we can really take inspiration from that. I know I, I went through a phase in my life where I traveled extensively uh, and I just used to, you know, I remember a friend of mine, we often used to go to the States, fly into um, an airport, Dallas quite often, hire a car with absolutely no plan whatsoever. We would just go on a journey and see what unfolded. We would stop at the town at the end of the day where we wanted to rest. Sometimes it was a dump and we would skip out of there first thing in the morning. Other times we uncovered a little gem where there were some cultural activities going on, a festival or something like that. And we would end up staying two or three days, making friends, learning something new about that part of the world. We can all take a little bite of that adventure pill that Bond seems to be able to swallow in unlimited numbers. And perhaps sometimes, well, we can be inspired by him to learn to live life to the fullest. <clears throat> you don't always have to plan everything to the nth degree. Take a chance, book a trip, see what unfolds. Well, you're young enough to do it, because believe me, when time sneaks up on you, suddenly you have a family, you're getting older, the commitments mean you can't do it anymore. Do it when you can. Follow the Bond example, see those exotic locations when you can. Now, another area which has become somewhat more controversial in the Bond character that maybe you do, maybe you don't admire in him. Certainly as a, a reader and a viewer of the character, we can admire it. And that is his prowess with members of the opposite sex, with women. He seems to have the ability to get women to swoon over him. And he has 
the strength of character to use that to the advantage of the missions that he goes on. Many times we've seen him seducing people, I think from Russia with love, you know, where he seduces the, the spy whose intent it is to, you know, uh, to, to, to spy upon him, but he wins them over with the manly attributes that he has. Now, all of the things that we've talked about up to this point are the things that make him attractive to women, his adventurous nature, his suaveness, his self-confidence, uh, you know, his, his relatable flawed hero. People seem to love people who are not perfect. Women seem to love a project, don't they, in a man? I know my wife did. But, you know, when we look at Bond, perhaps that's why he has this ability to use these attributes he has to uh, find favour with the ladies and then use that in the pursuit of his mission. Now, it's become perhaps somewhat misogynistic to suggest that Bond uses women in this way to achieve his goals. But if you are out there looking for a female in life, or another partner, shall I say, not necessarily just female, but you could use the attributes that we've talked about up to this point in maybe bettering yourself to be more attractive to people who you may seek to share your life with. It can be done. Bond uses it in every mission, and he seems to have control over his emotions, doesn't he? He rarely falls in love. He has done. We have seen him get married. We have seen him be stung by the relationships he has had. That plays into the flawed hero characteristic we've talked about. But he certainly gets the women, that's for sure. And that might be something you see as a, as a positive. I certainly recognize that quality in a man and appreciate it. So in conclusion, what would I say about James Bond? He's got many skills, hasn't he, that we can all appreciate and be inspired by. He's not just a character on the screen or in a book. For many of us who've been born and brought up in the Bond era, as I'm guessing most of us have, you know, whichever one of the actors was your favourite, you can take little attributes from the way they played the character. Sean Connery, brutish, tough, probably the closest to the book Bond. A bit like Daniel Craig. Um, then you've got Roger Moore, much more humour, much more charm bit more like Piers Brosnan. There's all different attributes we can take from the actors as well who play into the character. But I think the enduring appeal of Bond is that he is maybe an icon that we all appreciate. We wouldn't want his life, surely not. You know, there's a lot to trade off for driving around in an Aston Martin and in a fancy suit. I wouldn't want the consequences of the life he leads, but for sure, he is a character for whom we will always, I think, aspire to in Chap Nirvana. And I will constantly refer to perhaps how we do things in life as to how Bond might do it when I think about these things. Perhaps you will too. Let me know in the comment section below, what attributes of James Bond have I missed? What do you think he exudes that we could also take into our lives too? I hope you've enjoyed this video. A little bit longer than usual today, but you can't talk about Bond just in a, th a few throwaway comments. If you have enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, click subscribe. If you'd like me to talk more deeply and more in, you know, in sort of broader terms on the James Bond character, let me know because I love Bond and he has become a sort of uh, a stalking partner to my life. I've always enjoyed you know, the movies and the books and how it correlates to life. Uh, it's just such a fascinating topic. And uh, yeah, drop me an email. Email's on the screen now. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by buying me a coffee or becoming a patron. And I make additional video content for my patrons, and you can find out how to become a part of that in the show notes below. So, until the next time, get the dinner jacket on, stride out into life as James Bond would, and make the world your servant, not be a servant to the world. And I will see you again very soon.